The extreme liquidity of the Philippines banking system is not only one of the most solid characteristics of the country's economy, it is also a main competitive advantage uh, for investors, uh, companies and entrepreneurs on a regional level. Reform in this sector has also deepened opportunities for foreign banks looking to achieve a greater foothold in the sector. Our next discussion on the Filipino banking sector will be led by the president and co-chairman of the Philippine American Chamber of Commerce, who is also managing director uh, in the prime brokerage division of J.P. Morgan Chase. Please welcome Michael Nierba. So welcome back, everyone. Uh, let me introduce the, the esteemed panel. Uh, to my left, uh, you've already heard from Deputy, Deputy Governor Nestor Espinilla Jr. of the uh, Banco Central of, of the Philippines. To his left, in the middle, Lorenzo Tan, President and CEO of Rizal Commercial Banking Corp. And to the far left is Jay Collins, Vice Chairman of the Corporate Investment Bank of Citigroup and board member of the U.S. Philippine Society. By the end of 2015, we had already allowed the entry of six new uh, foreign entrants. Many of these are actually from the region, which actually supports our agenda of promote, promoting foreign direct investment. But also, more importantly, why we went into this direction is that it also... Um, addresses another element that I uh, discuss in my presentation, which is basically the many, although uh, the national capital region is a highly banked area, many parts of the country remain unbanked. And uh, the penetration of loans uh, and as well as deposits is relatively low by uh, global standards. So there is plenty of uh, opportunity that is uh, addressed there. And also the, the, the other element is the entry of competition uh, promises to introduce a greater degree of market discipline into the banking system. I, I do wanna congratulate um, uh, BSP for, you know, for the initiative in this space. I think it ultimately makes for a more dynamic, competitive banking industry and will allow more investment into the banking space going forward. Uh, and we're already seeing signs of that. Um, in particular, though, I think we'll, we'll eventually talk about financial inclusion and some of the challenges, but as we do, having new entrants into the consumer space in particular, uh, be they banks or non-banks, um, that would, that value control uh, uh, in the industry, that's gonna be critical to attack some of the financial inclusion problems. There are six new players with 100% license, two from Taiwan, two from Korea, one from Singapore. Our strategy is to work with these banks. We're, we're doing some syndications with some of these new players now. We don't see them as a threat. I think they add capacity to the system. Uh, it was mentioned earlier, we, still, we, we have 51 PPPs, only 12 has been approved so far. This requires a lot of long-term funds and most of the banks, local banks, are nearing the ceiling of their single borrower limits. So, you know, these this new players will add capacity to the long-term funding that we need for the infrastructure projects. Philippine banking system is a largely uh, private banking system, uh, unlike many banking systems in Asia. And there's a lot of market discipline in, that, uh, syst in this uh, system. Meaning, so the entry of uh, competition triggers uh, dynamic responses from market players, be that in upping their game or combining, merging, and consolidating to deal with the changing environment. I don't think we should look at the, uh, the, the liberalization of the Philippine banking system as something that we just thought about overnight. It is actually the, the towards the tail end of a systematic process of reforming and strengthening the banking system, which began many years ago. We drew a lot of lessons, for example, from the 1997 Asian financial crisis. And from that experience, we invested heavily in enhancing our uh, regulatory framework and our supervisory capacity, for example, and worked closely with the banking industry to enhance its own capacity and a lot of that initiative has been informed by the global reforms that had also been going on in parallel. So 
coming to 2014, when we came around to liberalizing the banking system, it was already from a position of strength in terms of having banks that are capable of uh, dealing with competition because they have already uh, strengthened their, um, <clears throat> their uh, capital basis and their uh, risk-bearing capacity. I used to think that one of the greatest challenge, challenges for bank regulators was keeping up with um, the, you know, the rocket science of managing risk in the banking system. And, and now, actually, I think it's keeping up with this fintech revolution. Um, and, and I would applaud what BSP and certainly Governor Tatango and Nestor and others have, have done of, of really laying the framework, consulting internationally, um, to be able to provide a framework for financial innovation, particularly taking on the mandate of financial inclusion. It's moving extraordinarily fast. It represents enormous opportunity to apply those transformational and, and disruptive technologies to the, one of the greatest challenges of our time, which is the, the developmental challenge of the poor, um, and to take that technology into the financial space and address the, um, the, uh, the plight of the unbanked. That's the opportunity. Uh, I was you know, taken by Dr. Rubini's comments this morning about how you know, the, the social injustice, uh, political inequality issues that, are, um, that, that exist in the Philippines and are, are very much a part of the unbanked challenge of the Philippines need to be addressed for a variety of reasons. And if they're not addressed, uh, we risk the backlash against some of the viable um, you know, liberal economic policies and parameters that the current government and um, the, the, the leadership of the Philippines has invested so much in. I think what you, we need to do is help SMEs uh, go digital. We help them sell their products through the internet and provide them a, a trustworthy, safe payment system, then I think we're providing a lot of opportunities to the CND market. <music>